and we have Miguel coming. Hello, Miguel. How are you? Hi, um, I'm good. All good here. Yeah, perfect. Nice. You have a professional microphone. That's great. Well, and uh, <laughs> not, not, not yeah. exactly that. Uh, okay, sorry. Uh, it seems so, but uh, it's not. <laughs> uh, have, please share your screen uh, with with us so you can uh, be on stage. Yeah. Your stage. It's the third button under our yeah. photo. Share the screen now. Yeah, we enhance your decision with news data. Perfect. We full screen. We see your video. The sound is perfect. Enjoy your time on stage for 25 minutes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. Um, and uh, here we're talking about mainly news data. Um, Dow Jones is very well known for uh, the index, the, the, the market index. Uh, but this was created to inform. So here, um, Dow Jones is everything about uh, news data. I'm a customer solutions engineer, uh, computer scientist and data scientist. Um, my role in the company is translating business needs into technical solutions. I'm based in Barcelona, but cover uh, this time zone, basically. So why news? Um, news uh, is proved to be valuable to better understand business context. So. Always when we have uncertainty, we try to find the best source uh, to cover that uncertainty, or explain uncertainty, and news turns out to be one of the best sources for that. It helps to assess risk of the economy of entities, to monitor conditions, to anticipate trends, anticipate uh, performance of a security or of a company, and deliver high-speed facts. Um, rather than wait for official reports and announcements to be uh, presented uh, outside. This is uh, sometimes called, also known as uh, now casting. So news uh, deliver a lot of additional information that we can take advantage of uh, in many different scenarios, specifically here for banking, um, finance and insurance, um, we're gonna see how news can be embedded using APIs. But first, I want to highlight something. And uh, in the era of um, fake news, we want to focus on quality news. And quality news is we need to rely on reliable sources, those sources that follow strict editorial guidelines that reduce noise, uh, noise and misinformation, that use uh, reliable sources uh, because they also have their own sources and they need to ensure that the um, the information is uh, certain. And um, uh, some of these sources in particular focus on economic and finance, financial events. But all of these are behind a paywall. So I guess some of you potentially have gone into the um, some website or a news website, uh, Wall Street Journal, for example. And inside the Wall Street Journal, you see you can browse uh, for free a couple of uh, articles and then you have to pay because this is costly and uh, these sources, but these sources provide very uh, reliable information. The use cases um, when using this reliable data is to um, assess credit risk or monitor credit risk in general terms, um, risk assessment and, and monitoring in the context of credit or insurance, uh, economic research, Due diligence, this is something that um, uh, in, in, with regulations is uh, very often, it's, it's a very common scenario um, that come, uh, we came across. Um, compliance, uh, sentiment, and among many other different use cases. We're gonna see a little bit more about these cases in detail uh, with the APIs, uh, with the API scenarios. So news are fine. We can rely on different sources. So there's uh, the Wall Street Journal or Washington Post or um, the Times. But um, what if we want to get all of them into a single place? So is when uh, news aggregators uh, are relevant. And news aggregators basically take all of these big brands and uh, put them all together into a single database. And this is what a news aggregate or do um, to pretty much collect all this information into a single database uh, following 
a, a unique data structure, which is potentially one of the most uh, um, useful features in, in this case. To have a unique data structure helps to understand the data coming from all these sources in a single, uh, in a unique way. And uh, from the business perspective, uh, consume the data from this unique source also helps uh, simplify subscription management to simplify workflows because um, there's no need to connect to many different sources, but only connecting to a single source is going to be uh, is going to give us uh, the chance to uh, connect our workflows. We have a single point of access for all the data, and the data enrichment has a unified criteria, which is also important. All those different sources can provide the uh, uh, data in different ways uh, with different cl classifications, but the understanding data with a single criteria is key to make it use useful. Um, well, in, in, in the world of Dow Jones, this is called Dow Jones Factiva. To, just to have an idea of how news data looks like in this database, if we take as an example uh, one article, um, we can expect that this article is going to have a, a title or a headline. Um, who wrote the article? Uh, we have a date, uh, modification date time, hopefully uh, to millisecond or nanosecond um, timestamp. We have a snippet, which is the first part of the article and the body. But uh, this is standard schema uh, can be enhanced. And uh, part of the job of a news aggregator is to enhance this data. In our case, for example, we add uh, subject codes, company codes, region codes. Uh, but the, we need to make sense of these codes or there are certain services that help us translate uh, whatever these uh, uh, NENEC code means. Um, well, we can translate that into something human readable. Uh, in the case of company codes, um, we can think about companies in many different ways. Uh, company codes is a word in itself. But in finance and the uh, banking industry, um, the, very, the most common uh, company identifiers are icing, gossip, settles, and uh, tickers. And in this case, um, companies can be matched. Uh, so we can connect news data coming uh, from a company, about a company, and we can connect those uh, companies straight into uh, our workflows. So traditional um, news consumption in terms of APIs um, uh, or, or news aggregator, I'm sorry, first uh, news aggregators. So in terms of news aggregators, we have a user and there's a news aggregator app which is the interface of a news aggregator uh, database. So in this case, um, basically what the, the um, end user is doing is running search queries into the aggregator application and these search queries are, are providing results, aggregated results to complete uh, its own workflow. Uh, workflows around credit risk assessment or monitoring uh, to do some economic research, due diligence, etc. So this is the type of use cases that we we see very common uh, with this interface. But this interface has some uh, downsides, and the downsides of this interface is that this doesn't scale. If, what if I need to complete uh, twenty due diligence uh, reports, or what if I need to monitor the credit risk for uh, 100 companies or 100 uh, um, entities? Um, it's not scalable in terms of uh, people. So when we um, try to think of um, different ways or better ways to uh, consume content, um, we understand that APIs is the best way to plug uh, workflows and allow these workflows to have some level of automation and um, more high volume processing. So it's when we start talking about APIs and from this point where we will focus on how all these APIs on how this news consumption uh, can be used uh, using APIs in the context of uh, companies. In banking and um, finance industry. 
So um, machine-driven consumption, um, it's, uh, we have an aggregator uh, database. Uh, this aggregator database has an aggregator API. Um, the API uh, provides the data to a custom processing uh, element. This, uh, well, well, we'll see what the, this represents, this box, the custom processing, which in the end is returning um, result to the end user. The end user in the end can, can, can see news data as such. So I'm going to read the article about uh, uh, yesterday's um, market um, performance or scores. What if uh, I want to see uh, a score or I want to see um, some derived data coming out of uh, the, the, the news? So this is, uh, in general terms, the schema, the, 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 the way um, users are consuming derived content out of uh, news data. And these use cases are very common uh, in risk assessment or monitoring, due diligence gain, algorithmic trading, uh, insurance risk assessment, or platforms. Um, in the case of uh, Robinhood, which is a platform very well known for, 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 for most of us, um, which um, consumes data and allows their users to read news data about the stocks uh, using this interface. Um, in the case of ESG, something uh, which is taking traction nowadays, uh, ESG scoring is something that also requires uh, this level of uh, data processing. So um, the API scenarios basically are, there's an aggregator database. And in this case, I have to differentiate between low volume news and high volume news. And that's why there's a low volume API and a high volume API. And the reason for this mainly is because of licensing. So please remember, um, we are talking about licensed uh, content, content coming from uh, premium sources, sources that are behind a paywall or, or sometimes are not public uh, in the internet. Um, and this content uh, has different uh, levels of licensing. Um, the low volume API, um, it's consumed mainly is human driven consumption. It's uh, content that is provided uh, on basis uh, on a basis of uh, user requesting the data. The other content um, has a different um, flow. And the flow uh, for high volume content, it's uh, to take a big portion of this database and uh, apply certain techniques to later um, plug this into uh, automated workflows. So to dig a little bit more into these two different scenarios, let me go through first through uh, the low volume API use case. The low volume API use case basically um, takes the aggregator database. Again, always uh, this database is our uh, starting point. There's an API which provides the data directly into a custom UI. Uh, if I have my intranet, if I have my corporate um, uh, CRM, I can include news data into this application by requesting information to uh, the API. And the CRM is a very good example just because this user, as long as uh, um, along with the, the actions this user perform, uh, in the website, there's certain um, there are there are triggers that request the information to this uh, API, and there are there's some modification there's a side um, path uh, to this mechanism which is automation workflows. The automation workflows is to um, run uh, predefined queries or run certain rules against this low volume API to highlight and enhance or make the um, easier to consume the, the, the news data for this user. And these um, use cases um, are, well, were mentioned before. Indeed is um, the, the, the use case used uh, in, in the Robin Code case. So credit risk assessment, for example, uh, if we take in particular this uh, use case, uh, use the low volume API, but um, companies usually use our data as one source. 
uh, one among um, other different sources. They have proprietary data and they have other data providers. And this is then ingested into something that aggregates the data, display the data into um, this interface, a custom interface, which in the end is consumed by uh, a person. So this simplifies the data collection for research, highlight relevant results according to predefined criteria and increase productivity. Um, the, the variation of this flow is exactly the same uh, um, structure, but is using an automated monitor. The automated monitor has certain rules and executes some often to provide the data um, and highlight only the important facts to the end user. So, um, not always the data is gonna be news data as such. We can provide also information uh, about uh, data volume. And data volume in itself carries a big amount of information. Something like this matrix, for example, is a list of companies and a list of topics. And we can measure what is the variance of news volume in regards to a company and a particular topic. So in this case, for example, we can say there's in, in the last seven days, there's been an interesting amount of information coming out about per, uh, financial performance for the company Westrack or the same thing for Iron Mountain in the case of uh, contracts and um, orders. Now let's move quickly to uh, the high volume API use cases. And the high volume API use cases, uh, we have start again with the aggregators database, but in this case, we have a small asterisk here. Uh, and what this means is that not, so, not all sources, not all newspapers, allow us to um, license the content for these types of scenarios. That's the other reason why APIs are a little bit, a little bit different. In this case, I mentioned before, uh, the high volume use case uh, requires to take a portion of this database into a local storage. And this storage is then used to apply different techniques. Um, these techniques then are gonna feed business workflows or as it was mentioned during the keynote today, uh, X as a service. So this is something very common in um, startups and uh, other companies that are creating their own uh, added value layers uh, for finance, for uh, other, business, uh, uh, other businesses, not only um, uh, in the world of uh, finance and banking, and they're creating their own X as a service um, layer. And this is something uh, very common uh, for portfolio management, economic research, uh, or um, ESG scoring. We have uh, an offering about that. Uh, it's a ESG scoring that um, precisely was, uh, uh, had an interesting publication last week um, about the 100 most sustainable companies worldwide. An example of this is portfolio management precisely. So, Portfolio Manager takes this extraction of news. Uh, this is the universe of trading, and this universe of trading uh, goes inside uh, uh, machine learning models and NLP to generate alpha and risk signals, which later are inserted into a quant workflow. So the key word here is quant workflows, and those for you that are a little bit familiarized with the quant workflows, um, those uh, are based on uh, calculating signals out of uh, um, the um, fundamental data or from alternative data. In this case, news allow to uh, calculate signals uh, from this uh, data, okay? So this high volume uh, service, the, the, the high volume API has two separate services. Uh, one service that give us all uh, the history. So if this is now, um, we have uh, the history that can be taken with use, using a snapshot and is useful for train, training models, understanding past events, summarize facts, identify patterns or backtesting. And this is delivered as files, Avro CSV JSON or streams is the other service uh, which is gonna listen uh, to news coming uh, about matching certain criteria. And it's helpful for predicting, monitoring, uh, get notifications and calculate signals. 
So the high volume uh, API has a pattern that um, is not, if I request the, the data to pull this uh, extraction, this small database, um, it is not going to return the database, the whole database uh, with, with a single request. The request is to trigger a job, which basically uh, I can provide what is the criteria, um, then submit the job, then monitor that the job is completed, and then collect the results by downloading the data. So this is also follows a different approach in technical terms, how uh, the pattern this is implemented. So this is uh, everything uh, I wanted to show you today. Um, I'm now open to questions. Thank you very much, Miguel, for, for this presentation. So we have, we have two minutes for questions. Uh, uh, the first question is about, uh, do you know existing uh, use cases where of uh, that you can share with us where actually financial data and news data are actually highly correlated and that would benefit from uh, an API uh, of news for financial data? Yeah, absolutely. And this is something that uh, um, is, can be seen in the past as uh, economic research. Uh, this is something that uh, we've seen uh, is, is a common use case for uh, um, regulators uh, and for uh, academic institutions. But also in the case of trading, um, trading platforms are also back testing using our data checking how these uh, events correlate and trying to find uh, the, the the key elements to calculate a signal at the right time uh, for the trading strategies is there also a sentiment analysis right uh, from uh, because it's about news but do you intend to have like you know social media or an adding sentiment analysis to it yeah, well, we are not at the moment adding this sentiment uh, to the data we provide uh, by our APIs. We suggest mechanisms to calculate that sentiment. This is something when we come across uh, sentiment is something that is not uh, standardized. Um, and the, we are that, that's one of the reasons why we haven't implemented that into uh, our data. But uh, we, however, uh, provide um, different mechanisms, and we suggest here in the developer portal, uh, there are uh, pointers on how, uh, what are different approaches to calculate sentiment on news data. Yeah, thank you very much, Miguel, uh, for all of this. This is all the question we had. Uh, thank you very much. You can uh, disconnect your 